how do I collect my samples for my research? I go on boats. Well, what does that mean, really? The boats we go on range in size. We, we can use the formal research vessels, which you find that NOAA has, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. We have formalized research vessels that are set up with laboratories inside. So there are many rooms to the ship, and we'll have a chemistry laboratory. And what does that look like? Well, you walk in, and there's a bunch of metal cabinets and plastic things on counters that we use to put um, different pipes and filters and for chemistry because we collect a lot of water. How do we collect water? Well, if anyone knows what a PVC pipe is, you know, a plastic tube essentially, a certain type of plastic used in sprinkler systems and other many systems that we use, well, we use big pipes, big PVC pieces, and we put stoppers on them. And then we connect them in a circular fashion to a big metal frame. And then you connect that with a wire that goes to the ship. The ship, the winches, the because uh, it's heavy, um, and we put sensors on uh, with this big, we call it the rosette because it's in a rosette shape with all these PVC pipes and there are bottles now with stoppers. And there's electronics in the center of it. And then we hook it up to a wire and the wire is a communication wire with the ship. So what we were able to do is attach the, the wire to this thing and it's called a CTD which means conductivity, temperature, and depth because these are the types of physical features we're trying to map essentially with this instrument and so we connect it to the wire the winch the the hydraulics lifts it up because it's too heavy for people to lift because we use big ones you can use a small one you can use one bottle by hand but we use a big one because it's more efficient and the hydraulics lift it and then we steady it as people we put ropes around it just to steady it we're not lifting to steady because that's not safe so we do that, we get it into the water, and then once it's in the water, we have the winch operator handling the hydraulics, watch it visibly with his eyes. We go inside to the laboratory. We turn all on our systems. We have all these computer screens now telling us through that one wire, it's talking to all the sensors that we've got, saying, what's the dissolved oxygen content? What is the salinity, meaning the conductivity, that's how we measure salinity in the water, the, sal the salt concentration. Um, we look at things like nitrates. We look at things like overall nutrients. And we have sensors all on the this system. So we collect water. And how do we do that? Well, we push buttons, and it, closes, it opens and closes those stoppers. And so we collect the water at different depths because there are many different things happening at different depths in the water column. That's just how we collect water. And it's cool. It, it, you think, well, it's just water. No, it's not. It, it's our canvas for knowing what's, what potentially is in the water. Because we measure the temperature. Well, if the temperature is too hot, you're not gonna find organisms that like cold water. So, that, so we have the first layer of our canvas there. And what is our canvas? Our canvas is, we're trying to paint the picture that is the ocean, and, so, and the scientific aspects of that. And so we, the water tells us so much. And then what else do we put in the water? Well, I put nets in the water, because I'm collecting fishes. Well, cut, well what's a net? Well, the earliest kinds of nets used to collect larval fishes, because I, I look at baby fishes, larvae, um, were kind of like pantyhose, because it's a very fine mesh and it's very strong. And so that was the first kind, like silk pantyhose was, was roughly the first kind of mesh that was used to collect these. Well, we've advanced that a bit and we use nylon and other more durable materials. And so I, I put that over the side using the same hydraulics with different openings, we call it mouth opening of the net, to collect, we have one at the surface, so it's got foam on the sides of it to float it, to keep it afloat, and we collect things at the surface, which is the newston, that's the newston environment, the surface of the water. And then we have other, we have put weights on other nets, same mesh, um, different frames though, to sink it, because I, I want to collect fishes at deeper. Um, and then, you know, we're talking to the guys, or women, whoever is operating the winches, the hydraulics, and tell them how far we want the net to go. We also uh, use acoustics, and this is kind of cool actually. Um, you know how bats, and you've heard dolphins and whales echolocate. They bounce sound off of different things. We do the same thing at different frequencies. If I had a mechanism right now to send out beeps, I could send a beep out to the wall that's 15 feet away from me. 
I could send a beep out to a chair or, or a, a box in, that's two feet in front of me. Now the sound is going to bounce back at me. The sound bouncing back from the wall 15 feet away versus the chair or box that's in front of me two feet away, that's gonna come back at a different frequency and the sound is going to be different. So we bounce sound from the ship. And then we get a picture of what the, the we have software that, that sort of integrates, sums, and integration is summing, it's a math term. And it, it, it take, ma makes a sum, it adds up all the different bounces, we call them pings, that are returning from the sound that we've sent out at different frequencies. And then you get these images that look like, at first look, they're like, you look like it's fuzz. It looks like noisy, fuzzy colors. But then when you start learning what the math behind it, and you have and numbers associated with the, the, the frequencies coming back at you, you get a picture of the animals that are in the water. You can find out fishes, for instance, many have swim bladders filled with air and sound bounces so nicely off of that air bladder that we get an image of fish schools. Like fishermen go out with fish finders. That's what they're using. Ours is more broad. We have different levels of frequencies to look for whales, to look for krill, what whales eat, to look for fishes, to look for different things. So we do a lot of the sound bouncing while we're out there. We do a lot of things at sea and that is just a few of them. It is amazing what we can do out there. I mean, the people and the scientists and the engineers that have been able to develop the different types of equipment so that we can paint this picture, this canvas of what the ocean is like, it's amazing. So this is some of what we do at sea and this is how I collect the organisms that I study.